if we have not met before, uh, my name's Hannah. I'm the co-founder and director of Diverse Educators. And we do a monthly or half-termly um, webinar with one of our collaborative partners. Sarah and I have been in and out of, of course, crossing over in our networks for quite a long time now. So it's fantastic to actually be here um, and holding this, hosting this session with her. So our mission statement at Diverse Ed is be where you are celebrated and not tolerated. Um, and we work um, with schools around the world, supporting them with their diversity, equity and inclusion training needs. Um, our hero image here captures that in the UK, in our um, Equality Act 2010, we think about nine identities protected in law. And I appreciate, based on where some of you are in the world, not all of those identities are recognised in law and aren't protected in the same way, but they are the nine identities we, we, we look after over here in the UK society and UK education. One of our um, pieces about our vision is that we want everybody to feel celebrated in every classroom and every school, that's every child every teacher, every non-teacher, every parent, every carer, really thinking about um, how people um, are celebrated for who they are and their authentic identity. Our mission is all about doing these kind of activities. It's about connecting, it's about collabor collaborating, it's about building community. Um, quite a lot of DEI conversations become quite negative and we critique all the things that aren't right and all the things that aren't happening. We try to keep an affirmative kind of lens and celebrate the things that are working, but also do that whilst amplifying the stories of diverse people. And our values that underpin our work are acceptance, visibility, celebration, belonging, and learning. So please do have a look at our website. There's lots and lots of free resources on there to support you. And you've all got my email address. Please do reach out if I can support in any way. So I'm going to hand over to Sarah, who is going to run the session um, tonight for us all around the idea of the big think. So Sarah, over to you. Hello, everybody. I'm just going to share my screen. So I'm Sarah Pengeli. I'm um a primary teacher from London. I've taught for about 15 years and I'm working in collaboration with the Human Values Foundation. They're a charity that's been established for 25 years and they're interested in uh, working with human values in primary schools um, to connect with PSHE work, personal, social and emotional learning work in um, British primary schools, but also around the world. We're in quite a few different countries because uh, lots of countries around the world are very interested in human values. So we've launched a new project called the Big Five Project, and the title is Inside Weather and School Climate. And this is our free element of our project. So the Big Think is a PSHE programme that can work in your school, but the Big Five Project is a taster of our kind of work. And we work with five big values and five big emotion, social and emotional learning skills. But all of the big think work always starts with thinking about when we say climate, we're thinking about the climate of your learning environments. Um, and so we always start with a shift in climate and how we're going to do that online is we're going to start with a meditation. So I'm going to uh, do a new share. So here. Oh, sorry, I think. I'm going to stop something actually and I'm going to show you my singing bowl. So we use singing bowls in schools, in primary schools. This is our peace singing bowl. We have a bowl, we have a beta and a cushion and children of all ages love a singing bowl. So we're going to use the, we're going to, it's really interesting because it's usually the test of our Wi-Fi connectivity when I do it online. But when you stop hearing the sound, I'd like you to touch, Rania, where should we touch on our bodies when we stop hearing the sound? Our nose. So we're going to touch our nose really gently and slowly when you stop hearing the sound. Some of the singing bowls, the frequency doesn't travel through the internet. It's so weird. So let's see if the piece one works. I can't remember if this is the one that works. So ready? You can't hear it. It's so interesting. I'm going to try a different one. This is our truth one, it's higher pitch, and I think it travels better through the internet. So interesting about sound, isn't it? Ready? You can't hear it. That's so interesting, sometimes you can hear it and sometimes you can't. Oh, well anyway, that's our singing bowl. And then we, this is how we connect with a group of children all together, that they focus in on their, when they stop hearing the sound. So it's about thinking of yourself, not copying what other people around you are doing. You, it's the first point of connecting with yourself. So I'm going to go to all of our um, resources play off a website because we're interested in the mental health of 
our staff as much as our pupils. So everything is easy access and already there. So the silent sittings have been recorded by um, one of the only child meditation experts that I could find in Britain, Christine Kerr from Calm for Kids. And she's connected um, all of, we've got 15 silent sitting tracks and they all connect to the different values. So we, it's been proven by research that silent sitting and meditation works better with children if it's in context of what they're learning about and what they're doing. So I'll press, we, you basically just press, press play. So this one is called Accepting All Weather and we're going to have a sit, get comfortable and close your eyes if you want to and enjoy. Imagine you're standing on the beach on a beautiful sunny day. The sky is big and bright blue, and the sea stretches into the distance, glittering in the sunshine. Take a few moments to feel the soft sand beneath your feet, and gently wiggle your toes around in the warm ground. You walk over to your towel that's laid out on the beach, and before you lie down, you gently rub on some sun cream. You settle into a comfy position on your towel, resting your arms by your sides and letting your legs become heavy and relaxed. The soft sand beneath your towel gently warms your back and legs. You close your eyes and feel the warm rays of the sun on your face. There's a light breeze that flows over you. The heat is just right, comfortable, relaxing. You can hear the waves lapping at the shore. The gentle rhythm helps you feel calm and settled as the waves flow in and out, in and out. You can hear the soft calls of seagulls as they fly overhead. There's a gentle ship's bell ringing occasionally in the distance. Nearby, you can hear the voices of your family chatting and laughing. You feel happy. Relaxed and safe, lying here on a lovely beach. Even the flow of your breath is relaxing, gentle, smooth and slow. Breathe in slowly and slowly breathe out. Breathe in slowly again and then breathe out slowly. The breeze flows over you as you breathe. The sound of the waves is just like the sound of your own breath. Breathe in slowly and breathe out slowly, becoming more relaxed with each out breath, drifting away into feeling calm and happy. Just breathing in and out, allowing your breath to flow naturally without thinking about it. Sometimes clouds will come into the sky. They float in front of the sun, and perhaps you feel cooler, or even cold. Rather than get upset, we can use the breath to help us accept and stay calm. As you breathe in, imagine you're breathing in acceptance, a feeling of softness. Allow it to fill the body like a mist or light fog. As you breathe out, breathe out a sense of love. Love for the sky, love for the sun, love for the sea, and even love for the clouds that make you feel cold. Fill the sky with acceptance and love. Breathe in softness and acceptance. Breathe out love. Breathe in, breathe out. A lovely, relaxing day at the beach. You hear the sounds of people playing, laughing. Breathe in, breathe out. Breathe in, breathe out. Lie here for a few moments, feeling calm and peaceful. And know that you can come back here any time you want and relax on your lovely beach.
Okay, so we give time and space to reflecting and focusing in the classroom. Um, it's for focus and calm, and this is a year five class, so it's actually a really tricky class uh, that I worked with at Eastwood Primary in North London uh, there in year five, and that was, they used to do silent sittings on a Friday afternoon. And then this is a reception class, um, age four to five um, in Reading. And so the, we, we're a skills-based programme and we're interested in self-management is one of our skills. So the skill of managing your emotions and identifying and using stress management techniques. And one of them is the breath. And that was one of our longer um, silent sittings. We've got a range of times and length and some of them are more visualisation based and some of them are more um, breath based. So the big five approach, how we're interested in how to develop an emotionally healthy school climate. A lot of PSHE programs or personal development programs are more content led and they want to know what, what do I need to know to be emotionally healthy? And we're interested in more, how do we work together? What systems do we need to put to place to make that climate happen? Not just the facts that you need to know. So we work with five big values, five social and emotional learning skills. And this is a five week project if you want to try this, this free project and you can find it on our website. So we're gonna be looking at how human values can bring about positive climate change inside your school how we can build vital social and emotional learning skills to help manage our inside weather as teachers, um, but also as pupils, foster strong relationships with one another and thrive as learners. And then how can we become confident and inclusive facilitators, facilitators who feel supported and respected? And we'll look through the resources as we go. So the Big Five Project explores human relationships through the lens of these five big human values. And the five values are truth, love, responsibility, community, and peace. And we call these umbrella values. They're really large and they encompass all values that exist. And every human will find different meaning in them. Um, and you, we, we, we never say to children that we're teaching them what their values should be. Kind of values are kind of inside us all and they change over time. And so we're all coming at them in our own way. And so we're not ever saying this is how things are done and this is how you this is what love looks like. It's an exploration. It's an inquiry. We're all coming together and sharing what we think. Um, and we use bubbles because they're in di they're different importance, levels of importance in our lives at different times and they can change shape at any time. And then we're also in interested in linking values to feelings and emotions. And um, what's happening on the our inside? What's the weather in the classroom? What's the weather inside me? Um, and where is that coming from as a teacher or as a pupil? So we, we work as humans, so we kind of don't split um, the difference between the children and the staff. Everything we're doing is for the benefit of everybody. Um, so the five big values here, this is our wheel. Our feelings are changeable like the weather, like the uh, silent sitting we just did. They come and go, and it's really important that children know that. So when they're having a bad feeling, they know that it's going to move and it doesn't mean that they're a bad person. Um, and then the social emotional learning skills. This is um, the, it's a CASEL framework. It's an international model of social emotional learning, but I've only really see it used in America. I don't know, someone's from North Carolina here. I don't know if you know. Um, and I've seen it in Finland quite a lot, but not much in the UK. Uh, but I find that it, the list of competencies that are attached are excellent and really helpful to us. Um, and our values and skills are more stable, like our climate, they move more slowly over time. So we're quite interested in pace in the big thing. So our lessons are not as pacey as some of the content driven uh, lessons that you might find on knowledge base. So this is our map um, of all our 60 human values that we have a lesson for each of these values and an assembly that goes with it because we're quite interested in working with the whole school community at once. So everyone would be doing the same assembly and then going off and doing the same lesson on the same value at the same time once a week. Um, so I was wondering if you could each have a look at all the values, it's quite overwhelming, and pick one that's meaningful to you today and share with us why that's meaningful. Um, and also just introduce yourself. Because another part aspect of the big thing is we like everyone in the room to feel um, that they've got a voice and included. So if I start, um, I'm gonna leave the poster up for a minute more and then we'll, I'll stop sharing and we can see each other's faces. 
I'm going to just pick one if we all pick one now. Um, Okay, I'm going to stop sharing. Hello, everybody. If you could put your camera on now, that'd be really helpful as well. Um, just I love, it's face to face. We love faces if you can, but otherwise you don't have to. So I'm going to choose the value of non-judgment. I've been working with um, quite a lot of different settings this week, and I keep finding myself coming in. I've been in a private school. I've been in an international school, and I've been in a community school. And I feel like I'm coming in with a bit of judgment um, about what how I think things should be run. And I, I've got I'm, I'm aware that I'm doing it, and actually I'm learning that all the different ways are really interesting and they're all they've all got such positives and I'm coming I'm realizing I'm being judgmental especially to private schools so I'm trying to be aware of that um what about you Rania which value did you choose um I saw the I don't know if I saw the screen correctly but it was the ones with the five the love community piece yeah oh did you not see all the poster of all of them at lots of values did you not see no. that? Did anyone else? Is I not, am I not sharing properly? Yeah, Hannah. It was, I saw it. Do want, yeah. wait, it was quite quick. Do you want to maybe just pop it up again? Yeah, let me put it back up. Sorry. I'm happy to do mine whilst people are choosing theirs, um, yeah. Sarah. Can because you I see it now, Rania? Can you see it? Um, no. Oh, how weird. I can. There's one with like 40 words on it in different colour text. I think I know what you're talking about, but it's not on my screen right now. What can you see then? You can just see people. At the moment, I can see a blank screen. How weird. How about everyone else on the call? Can you see Sarah's slide? I can see. Uh, I can see it. It's clear for me. Very odd. Should we do other people, Sarah, and then come yeah, to Rania sure. when hopefully it pulls through? Yeah, Hannah, you go next. <laughs> well, I was going to go with optimism. Sarah knows when I came on the call, I was a bit stressed. I'm trying to move house. My house purchase keeps falling through. I'm trying to stay really positive and really optimistic, even though it's we all know it's very stressful when you buy and sell houses. So I was, I'm, that beach wash was just what I needed, actually. <laughs> and who would you like to hear from next, Anna? I'm going to invite um, Sarah to join. Sarah, can I call you in? Yeah, I'm actually Sally as well. I was on my iPhone, so I'm back on my oh. computer. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry about that. So yeah, it's the same person. Um, yeah, I chose kindness to, to, to others. I have time to see that. Was that correct? Yes. And why did you choose that as a meaningful one today? I just think it's something that I try to incorporate in my um, daily life when I'm meeting any anybody. I just think small kinds of uh, small acts of kindness, kind of uh, if anybody, everybody was to show just simple kindness, it really helps everybody during the day. You know, and, uh, one of the not cheapest, one of the easiest things to do. And it has great dividends that people really appreciate it when you're just trying to be kind. And I think often we're not even that kind to ourselves. So I just think kindness is really important and just simple actions. And it's something that we can all do. We can do it every day, you know, when you're driving and it really puts you in a, in a good space, I feel. Thank you. That's really interesting. Who would you like to hear from next, Sarah? Can you see who would you like to choose someone, Sarah, to speak next? Or me? Yeah. We're following um, rounds. You're going to be the Rania, chair. Um, do we ask Rania? I mean, I just, I just trying to see who I have on the yeah. chat. Sorry, Rania, just... do you want to choose one of the five um, new ones that you saw? The, 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 oh yeah, now yeah. I can see Eric. I can see now. Okay, I can see others now. Um, I'll go for um, love then. Um, yeah, I just feel grateful for um, you know, my family and the thing the people around me and sharing that love with others as well so it's something that I try to um do in my daily life and just remember when I am feeling down that there is that there to kind of keep me going through difficult moments throughout the day and things like that thank you Rania and who would you like to hear from next um I'm challenging is it there I can see in Anastasia Yes, hi everyone. Um, I think I would agree with Sarah and just, just kindness because at these difficult moments, you know, um, after the pandemic and everything, I feel people sometimes lost that, you know, 
the feeling of being kind and accept kindness from others. And that's what we, we need to teach to teach our young kids as well. I work with the age three, four, and we try to incorporate it into every, you know, every moment of teaching, because I believe that this is the age where we plant the seed for the future um, kind people. So that's- Thank you. It's really interesting, like you mentioned the pandemic, because since before the pandemic, when we did work with values with schools, they would often choose sort of aspirational um, values about achievement and now when I'm doing consultations with schools um, kindness and happiness uh, and compassion are the top three I would say it's really a real shift isn't there uh, yeah thank you and what about you Hanin oh, um, actually there was like a lot I, I can choose from it was really hard to choose one like the um, the three most values that I chose, like happiness, self-esteem, and consideration, I found that um, consideration has a really strong effect on other people. Sometimes we're, we're kind of living our daily lives, just being more self-centered um, in our own bubble. And, you know, not ignoring, not trying to ignore other people, but not being very social and asking other people, how do you feel? Caring about them, showing them that you care and they matter. So showing this kind of consideration to to people actually can mean a lot to them. Like, oh, you recognize me. Oh, my day matters. My emotions matter to you. So showing this small um, feeling, this attention to them can actually change someone else's world. You can give them the happiness without you actually realizing that. So I think that consideration has a very strong effect on giving a happiness in other people's, other people's life. Beautifully put. Um, I th that's what's interesting about values, aren't they? Because they can relate to yourself, but it's they relate so well to others, and that's the skill, the human relationship we're trying to think about. And then also the wider world. They kind of work on three levels, don't they? And what about you, Erin? I think the two that um, resonated the most for me would be um, belonging and compassion. And so um, I chose belonging because um, I think thinking educationally, right? That's that's what we want. We want everyone to have a sense of belonging, um, to feel welcomed and affirmed and valued. And I think that's key for social emotional learning. Um, and then just compassion. Um, that's heavy on my heart because where I'm at, <laughs> there's a lot going on every day. And it's um, just things we're seeing on the news and um, with students, with human beings' lives. Um, that makes, um, makes me feel that we just need a world more full of compassion and understanding. Thank you. So important. Um, if, is that everyone? I think we've heard from everyone. Have we had that yet? Yeah. Okay, I'll go back to this. So the way you were connecting then was representative of how we like the children to talk with each other. We find that going in through a human value, it's like going in through a, a, a person in a story. They can detach from, uh, it, it doesn't feel too personal. You're not asking them anything direct, but they end up able to share, being able to share. And you learn a lot about people when they're talking about their own personal values. So this is the social emotional learning skills. And we've connected the skill of self-management to all our peace lessons. And self-management is about self-management of time, emotions, and actions. How do I regulate myself through the day? And what choices am I making um, related to my emotions? And the self-awareness skills, skills come through our truth lessons and that they're all about linking my feelings, values, and thoughts. And then our relationship skills lessons come through our love, developing positive relationships through effective communication responsible decision making this is the section when we work with we work with parents and carers a lot with our projects and they often say this is the skill they wish they were taught more at school how do i anticipate and evaluate the consequences of my actions both small and big um, through the day it's trying to give more agency to the pupils and then community is more outward looking uh, what social awareness skills am I, do i have and this connects to the skill of empathy, understanding others' viewpoints. So the top two are more reflective and thinking about myself and how, and, and so that the peace and truth values are much more inward looking. And then the um, bottom three are much more outward looking. So we often start with the top two truth or peace values. So the Big Five Project helps primary schools place relationships at the heart of the community. And research by Big Change, a British charity and the Relationships Foundation 
showed that what mattered most to young people, what they really felt was missing or lost during the pandemic was the role of school as the center of their social and relational worlds. And I just keep this in there even now because I feel like we're still building that back and we still um, need to reflect on how important a school is in the wider community, not just for academic learning, um, but being the heart of the community. And this is um, related, I think it was Erin said about the sense of belonging being so important in social emotional learning. And it, this is a, o, the OECD did a study called Beyond Academic Learning. Um, it's the first of its kind looking at social emotional learning skills um, internationally. Um, it's a huge study of international schools around the world. And it shows a relationship between the, the higher the student's sense of belonging is, the more, the higher all of these skill sets are. So it's just reminding all schools that if you can get the student to feel like they belong, they're going, their task performance is going to definitely increase, their emotional regulation, the way they collaborate, how, how open-minded they are, and how they engage with others and everything is related. And I know we all know this as practitioners, but it's quite interesting to put this as our starting point of where we want to start in a, as a school and how we're going to get that. Um, so when we work with schools, we often work with parents, children and teachers together. Uh, and we look at the value of responsibility. Whose responsibility is it to create this kind of environment? And we try and build a team um, to say that it's not just the leadership's responsibility. It's not the teacher's responsibility. It's not the pupils or the parents because it can feel quite stressful um, taking that on on your own. And the only way it's going to work is if all of us have a part to play in building this kind of community and uh, climate together. So that's usually our starting point when we work with schools. And then we look at responsible decision-making skills that are on our program to help us, um, that we reflect on our own role to build this kind of community well-being. Um, so all of the different skill sets are exactly like the values. You can relate them to yourself you can relate them to you and others, and then you can re relate them to the world. So they're talking about the, on a personal level, interpersonal level, and then institutional level on everything. So it's sort of building different levels of thought and different levels of action all the time. So the programme, if you, if you want to try our free project for a taster, you would start with the self-awareness um, skill and you would do a session. It's called Me and My School, and it's just a lesson. It takes um, less than an hour, um, and it's based on the value of truth, trust. Can you share your values and express your feelings? Um, and then you would move on to self-management, peace, my inside weather. And this would be more of an assembly altogether and then a lesson. And it's about understanding yourself. The question is what makes you happy inside? And then we move on to relationship skills and sharing, which is an assembly again. And it's more thinking about our class uh, uh, inside the room, the sharing with others come naturally to you. And then we're thinking more about our community. So we're thinking of the levels here. It's me, it's my inside, it's my group, my wider school community. I'm thinking more further afield. What's my responsibility outside of my classroom? What, how do I show the people who work hard for me respect every day? And then we're thinking more broadly um, about empathy. And this one happens to be a conservation lesson. Some of them aren't, but this is more about what actions can I actually take to help my planet? So the, this is just a taste of how the levels of our program and how they work. And the way we build relationships in the classroom and around the school, as we use a poster like this, it's values in action. So we did the silent sitting helped us to relax. And we see that as a really key part of, if you want to learn new things, um, and feel like you belong you first of all got to be relaxed and it's really hard to be relaxed in a big group so we work on that kind of feeling as a teacher as well it's impossible to teach if you're not feeling relaxed and your best teaching will come when you're feeling relaxed so we try and give that um really a lot of space at the top and then we then because we, we can do that we're, able, we're then able to be curious about each other and new things and we can build trust we can speak openly um we, this is our key value for the older children, be non-judgmental. And we talk about it a lot in a lot of our work. So everyone's allowed their own opinions. I mean, we are all allowed to disagree. Um, we are all humans. We've got different backgrounds. We don't have to all agree on everything. There seems to be a, a, a feeling that we're not allowed to disagree 
uh, there's right or wrong and there's and we're not allowed to but we're, we're trying to learn that we can listen to one another without judgment we don't have to agree on things and we might change our minds the whole thing is that we're flexible and if we hear an opinion that actually changes our mind then we might um, move over to that change so we respect all opinions we join in with courage so we're always trying to get those quiet children that maybe don't normally join in to feel like they can in this session it's for everybody because there's no right or wrong you can't make a mistake you, everything's valued and then we include everyone and in the middle in our pilot we noticed as teachers we would say listen to yourself stop following your peers stop copying what your what you think your teacher wants you to say because in a lot of lessons that are knowledge based the teacher is asking a question that they know the answer of and they're expecting waiting for that answer to come up there isn't an answer in this lesson so what is it you actually think we're trying to get a sense of self um, started and also listen to others so it's more of a listening program than a talking program and so this is the taste of one of the sessions understanding self what makes you happy inside i will share the screen and any point you can jump in and ask things by the way i haven't even said that um i think it's this one so this is you'd open up your online resource you've got assembly screens at the top you can just play off the screen you don't even need to download we want you to be able to come in from play or oh, playtime rush to the laptop and get started um so the story would be here these are gorgeous stories picture books written by a charity in south africa called book dash um you must look them up you can access all of their work for free they publish books like this um they're small picture books and they're written by, um, they put together illustrators and um, authors for a weekend. They do 10 books per weekend. They create a publishing house. They fly people in from around the world. And their remit is to make sure every child in the townships has access to 100 books in their own home. So they, have, they then deliver them, hand, hand them out um, every few months. So you can see the collections building in their children's homes. And then they also give creative commons to any um, company or education establishment that they feel is um, using their books to help disadvantaged children. And we work with quite a lot of schools with disadvantaged children. So my inside weather um, would be you just play it off the screen, uh, just give you a little taste. It's easy to talk about the weather outside, even if it changes all of the time. But it's hard to talk about the weather inside me. Sometimes it feels like people don't understand. Do you feel that too? Some days my mind is full of sunshine and rainbows. I feel like I can do anything. On other days, my head is full of fog and clouds. It's hard to listen to what people are saying. So this would be a story we would share with um, ages five to seven. Uh, some, actually our four-year-olds do this one as well. And it just talks about we well, most of our work ends with who if you're feeling like you, you're unsure about something, who is your safe person that you're going to speak to and on this occasion it's her grandma and she learns that she feels the same too. Okay. Um, just quickly go back to the. So another way we work in the classroom, because um, we're interested in naming our feelings and sharing them, is we use a big feelings compass, which is this sort of size. We print them off so that you can work in pairs. And this is the one for older children aged 7 to 11. And on the outside are feelings that are comfortable, um, that you might quite like having. And on the inside are less comfortable feelings that you might not like having. And what we try and do when we work with the children in every lesson is we reflect on the weather or the feelings that they're having, not at that moment, because that's too direct and too personal, but the feelings that they might have if they were the character in the book, and it would be a particular moment. So, or a feeling about sharing. So if the feeling is, do you find sharing easy? Or how do you feel when you have to share something? And we talk about mixed feelings. So we ask children to choose one feeling from the outside and one feeling from the inside because humans are very complicated and we often have more than one feeling happening at once. And if you can try and identify a positive one, it might help you because sometimes you can feel like if you're feeling 
um, anxious, it might be it takes over and it's the only feeling you can find. But if we're learning to always think of two or three and identify them, we can usually move through them more easily. And there's also some of this language is safeguarding language, such as unsafe, I'm feeling unsafe, I'm feeling stuck, I'm feeling shame, I'm feeling suspicious. And this language I've never seen used so highly as uh, in COVID when we did online sessions, they were used daily, 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 daily. Um, so but they can be used for small things, but also when children really need to be reporting or uh, talking to someone about something, we want it to be quite accurate and we want them to have the vocabulary ready. So if we can go, do you think, Hannah, could we go into a breakout room, do you think? Of we course, Hannah, yeah, what do you want? How many breakout rooms, two? Just a really short, just a really short one uh, to talk. It, or well, we could do it all together. We've not got time, do you think? What's it's absolutely up to you. But everyone gets a chance to talk if we get put into two breakout rooms. Let's do two breakout rooms. And I want you to consider what's your inside weather right now. So you're going to think of a mixed feeling. And then with a partner, how might your mixed feelings impact the weather in your classroom? You know, there might be some positive weather that you're bringing, but there might be some difficult weather that you're bringing into the classroom. So can you, do you does everyone understand? Do, so three pairs or two trios, three, three. what would you like? And just really quick, so just for three minutes or something? Okay, perfect. Um, here we go, let's see if we can make this work. So choose your feelings now before we go, so you can see them. I'll do four minutes, I'll bring you back at quarter to exactly. So don't join the room till you've chosen your... Okay, everyone's back, Sarah. Hi. That was really interesting. Would anyone like to share um, some of their mixed feelings? You might, you can make your feelings up because I know you didn't have the wheel. Um, I haven't seen Vicky's face. Hi, Vicky. Uh, would anyone like to share? I don't. Oh, Vicky, there's no sound coming out, sweetheart. Oh, could you put it in the chat if it's not working? Because we'd love to hear. I just heard from. Um, Sarah, do you mind sharing your two feelings that you just sh shared? Me? Yeah, is that right? Or yeah, yeah. yeah that's perfect. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, my, I chose um, content as one of them, and then um, the, the, the other feeling of it was stuck. So I chose content because actually I, it's eight o'clock in the evening here in Mauritius. I just came back from having a family dinner that I hosted for my dad, who was 88 years old. So it was a lovely family moment and a lot of peace around that. Um, there's a kind of lovely contentment there and a feeling of belonging as well, I suppose. And um, but at the same time, I'm sitting there feeling quite stuck because you can be triggered back to your past and you're like, oh, I think I've worked on myself. But actually, you can easily go back somewhere and you feel, oh, I haven't really moved on that, that much. So it was just a lovely insight seeing myself going from one to the other. Um, because you're with somebody from your past that's been with you all your life. So it was, it was an interesting moment just for there. And then I'm talking to you now. It just that's what came up like. Thank you. It's really interesting. Anyone else like to share? Okay, we're going to move back on to me. Thank you. That's really nice. Um, so the children get really familiar with these. They own them. They have them in their hands. Um, and then this is part of our training when we work with staff. We use this quote, I know you've probably seen it quite a lot. I've come to the frightening conclusion that I am the decisive element in the classroom. It is my personal approach that creates the climate. It's my daily mood that makes the weather. And we just do a reflection piece when we're working with teachers about how you can bring, how you're bringing your own weather in. And, um, and that our program is for them as much as for the children, because it's really tough. Uh, being with 30 people in a room all day um, everybody's weather gets entangled and so everybody needs to be supporting each other and we do a piece of work with the staff to make sure they're supporting each other um, through that kind of feeling so the, the, it's a dialogic classroom there will either be a big values inquiry which is scenarios where they move around and say what they would do in that situation or it will be a, a role play or it would be a big circle where they do what we've just done and uh, pick a value. It will be a value that, uh, of the day and they have some time to really listen to one another, explore that value. So that's they're most commonly a dialogue that will, will take place. And so the values inquiry might look like this. What makes you happy inside lesson? We'll have six quick scenarios. Uh, there's posters around the room, inner happiness, outer happiness, 
unsure and then the teacher will say, uh, does it make you happy inside if you gain lots of views on your Snapchat story posts? And this can be changed depending on the age group and what your children are doing. This was used in year six, age 10, 11. Um, and then the children would say that, what kind of happiness that is. Is that a real happiness that's quite deep for you? Is that a quick happiness that's momentary and doesn't last? And, they, and there's no right or wrong. So I remember a girl standing, buying a new outfit for a big occasion you know she it was proper deep inner happiness for her and she really it was so big for her to do that because she never got to do it and you know other people saying well that's superficial but it it wasn't for her so i just mean it's just showing different ways of thinking and moving and talking um in all of the sessions and they're really lively and the children run them themselves and the teachers are taught to facilitate not lead it's quite hard to be quiet as a, a teacher i think uh, and not correct either. So these are some of the skills when they're doing it. Examining prejudice and bias is the main one, really. Um, and so we do work when we're working with teachers about how to be a facilitator. Um, it's a very different shift uh, to their other lessons in the day. And when we're doing stories, these are our diverse story writers. So for picture books are for the younger children and for the older children, we have specially written stories that are five minutes long, uh, to, written to be read aloud. And our lead author has gone on to be a superstar author. She, she's written, Danny Chung does not do maths. And her latest book, Keep Dancing Lizzie Chu. And she's one of the first British Chinese um, children's writers. Uh, so, you know, children, uh, British Chinese children are being represented in books for the first time. It's quite sad to think that it's only happening now, but unbelievable because she's, this is her on news round, um, talking about British Chinese children um, being able to see themselves in books for the first time. But she's our lead author. She put together a consortium of authors and they thought they're all brilliant. And so if you're doing this program with the older children, the story would be hashtag no filter. Um, and it would be a social media story about how does it, what does it make you feel um, chasing down those likes on social media. And then the love sharing story would be um, Ankle Girl about uh, two children meeting and sharing food, um, having judgments about one not having much money, her uniform's not quite right, she's got a short trousers and there's judgments going across, but then learning that actually um, she's got really interesting food from her home and she loves her food and they become really good friends and she, the sharing happens uh, in a different direction than you th thought it was going to happen. And then respect for others. This story is about what happens when all the adults in your life go on strike um, and how you're going to cope. Uh, learning to notice the small pe the people in your life that support you in your day um, that you might not uh, respect or show respect to and then the community clean air is about a group of friends from around the world they're from different three different countries and what the clean air situation is like for them and they're 11 years old and what sort of things do they do in their community and then at the end of every session there's a journal reflection page which they build up through the two years of our program so that when they finish uh, they have thoughts about their own roles and actions and reflections and so it's quite a nice thing. And we also, we love singing. So there's a lovely song written by the Grey's Anatomy uh, band. Uh, I don't know if you watch Grey's Anatomy, but you can listen to them, that's wicked. Um, and then, so this is what it looks like in the classroom, sitting in a circle on a chair. This is the first week after COVID. They're in their um, tracksuits still. This is a school in Kensington. And this is a non-verbal autistic boy doing who doesn't normally come into the classroom. He's usually here on the outside, one-to-one. -one. Um, he, we left him a space. We always try and include everybody. They have the choice to come. She's got her eyes popping out of her head because she's in shock because he's joined. Because he, we played the beginning of the inside smile and he loved it and came and sat. And then he is looking at trees outside um, as, as they move because that's how he did the silent sitting. And he sat the whole time and she, well, she and her, they can't stop looking at him. But I mean, we, we're really inclusive in how we work and we, we adapt and we use a lot of sign language um, from our specialist schools. So a lot of our songs are all sign language based. Um, and then our assemblies are low and circle based and we do not put year six at the back. This is year six at the front. So the older children are really leading it and involved um, and modeling to the rest of the children rather than hiding at the back and not being included. Um, and this is with a singing bowl. We use the whole thing and we do a read aloud story. 
And this is our parents. This is um, actually a project we did with Islington uh, based on values and faith. Um, we teach sex education in a lot of British schools and it brings up a lot of um, different discussions about different faiths and what we want our children to learn about. But we go in through the angle of respectful relationships and we link whatever your faith is to the different human values because all humans have values and they can link really well. So it's just a really nice way of connecting with diverse groups um, over different topics. I'm just gonna share that. And this is our school we trained in Pakistan last week. We have a lot of pupils of different ages attend. We have a lot of teachers, that's the head teacher there. We have the community leader attend and then caregivers are the parents and there's the deputy there. So we like the community to come together and have a talk. So we're gonna end with uh, just, we've got five minutes or just two minutes if you have a question that you want to ask, or if, you, if there's one thing you want to take away from today, if you're going to share it with us, just because at the end of all the big think, we have to hear everybody's voice before we go. That's how we end as well. And these are our next three workshops if you want to send any colleagues. Sorry, lots of talking, the end. Um, so uh, would anyone like to start as a checkout um, comment or question? So we're going to end in two minutes. Um, I, I'll start. Thank you very much for sharing the the real life photos. That was really interesting because normally you don't have an in, you don't have a look into somebody's work like that. That was really very mm -hmm. nice to see the classroom yourself working, the kids, and the the sharing of the moments you had with the children. That was really lovely. Oh, thank you. I have something to say as well. I I really as was admired with. Uh, the feelings compass, I found it very detailed and very efficient if we used it and applied it for kids and for adults, because as you know, we adults also go through this inner weather, we can, which can also be contagious between our colleagues and to our towards our students. So if we just learn to vent out all those, let's say, negative feelings, um, listen to others so that we can at some point also when we go and meet our students, we listen to them. And we don't pass on our, um, let's say, hard feelings to them as well, because they mm. go through their own, let's say, thunderstorm and weather themselves, not only us. Thank you. So true. <laughs> Anyone else? I'm just going to say I love amplifying great people doing great work. And this all really resonates with me. Um, and I can't wait to start signposting. Now, now I've done the workshop with you, Sarah, and I really can't get the work you're doing. Mm. It really speaks to the work we do around belonging and community and identity yeah. and relationships. Yeah. And we quite often have a lot of secondary facilitators. And like Vicky's one of the schools we're working with in a primary lens. I can really see this sitting in a lot of the work we signpost. So thank you very much. Oh, yeah, brilliant. Thank you. And anyone else before we go? I think. We're going to say goodbye then. Thank you, Hannah, for facilitating. It's been really Thank great. Thank you for being here. <laughs> I'm going to. So, so, go on, Sally, go on. I'll just say thank you so much. That was lovely. Yeah, it's, it's been a lovely, lovely session. Just what I think we all needed for our soul to be nourished tonight. Yeah, um, I will get details from Sarah, blurbs, links to anything you need to know, and the recording is sent it all over to you in the next couple of days. Um, so, thank you very much, um, and I'll be in touch.